The size is perfect. Oh, thank you. It's beautiful. You'll look so chic when you meet Mrs. Putnam, Anna. First impressions are so important. Anna, honey. Oh, Marina, I'm so scared. But I'm happy. I'm happy too, Pet. I'm happy everything is working out so wonderfully for you. Oh, Marina, I want you to come to America too. Oh, I will. I'll visit you hundreds of times. Now, go and try it on for me. I want to see you in it before I leave for the theater. Go, go. What was she like, Roland? Will Anna be happy with her? She's very rich. Does anything else matter? When did she want to see Anna? She wanted to see her this afternoon. I told her I wanted the money first. You didn't. Roland, you fool. That may ruin everything. What if she gets suspicious? You, uh, you were beginning to shout. Anna. In 1958, the World's Fair brought visitors to Brussels from all over the globe. Along about the middle of the summer of that year, I was one of them. For a change, I wasn't there on business. I just wanted to see the fair. Visiting Americans is supposed to register with the U.S. Consul when arriving in a foreign country. It's a good thing to do in case someone back home wants to locate them in a hurry or in case of trouble. I wasn't in any trouble. As a matter of fact, my only problem was that I didn't have a date yet for that night. The girl at the reception desk said she'd be glad to help me with my registration, that is. <clears throat> I have the form for it. You sure do, honey. <laughs> Your name goes here. Occupation or business here, your address while staying in Brussels, and so forth. What are you doing tonight? Uh, my husband and I are taking in a show at the fair. <clears throat> yeah, well, like you said. <laughs> my name's uh, Mike Hammer, residence in New York City. Occupation, private detective. Residence in Brussels, Plaza Hotel, although it might just as well be the YMCA. <laughs> Anything else? That's all I can do for you, Mr. Hammer. Yeah. Have a good time while you're in Brussels. Oh, I'll try, honey. <laughs> I'm sure you will. Yeah. Oh, Mr. Hammer. I couldn't help overhearing your name in there and the fact that you're a private detective. Oh, that's right. I'm Mrs. Wilma Putnam from the States, and, uh, well, I'll come right to the point, Mr. Hammer. I want to hire you to do some investigating for me. Oh, I'm, I'm terribly sorry. I'm here on vacation. I'll pay you well. No, I'm sorry. Oh, do think it over, Mr. Hammer. I do need your help. Well, where are you staying? At the plaza. Same as you. Room 7 to 8. All right. I'll meet you there in an hour. Thank you, Mr. Hammer. This was the ad that was running in the European newspapers. It was printed in four different languages. My sister married a Polish schoolteacher in 1939, just in time for the Blitzkrieg. They escaped to Paris, worked for the underground, and Paul was captured by the Nazis. My sister was sent to a concentration camp at Ravensbrück. Her baby was born that same year. When did you first hear about the baby? The Red Cross found a letter my sister had written just before she died. It was forwarded to me almost a year later. This is the first letter I had in reply. I got it six months ago. It's signed Marina Gabreski. She said she saw the ad in a Brussels newspaper. When did Marina Gabreski first mention needing money? Two weeks ago. 
A letter arrived asking for $500. Miss Gabreski said if she could go to the south of Germany, she could bring back proof of the identity of the child. Proof? What proof? Pages from my sister's diary. December 25th, 1944. I wonder if my darling baby, my Derna, will ever know the meaning of Christmas. Have you checked the handwriting? That's why I'm here. I'm sure it's my sister's. Then why did you change your mind? The man who came to see me today, Roland Mario, he said he was representing Marina Gabreski. Mr. Hammer, when my husband died, he left me a great deal of money. I want to do everything I can for my sister's little girl, if I'm sure that it is her child. But I don't intend to be the victim of a hoax. This Roland character must have asked for more money. Oh, he did. He's very charming about it. A little too charming, Mr. Hammer. Nevertheless, he said I could not see the child until he had been repaid for his investment. Investment? What investment? Care, feeding of the child for 12 and a half years, her education, medical expenses, and all that sort of thing. Oh, no. He said he had stood every bit of it as a business speculation. Business, huh? This boy should go far. How much was the ransom? Ransom? Well, what would you call it? If he didn't ask for much, you'd probably decide to pay. It was only $5,000. $5,000. When? I said I would have it for him tonight. Oh, it isn't the money, Mr. Hammer. I know, I know. It's the principle of the thing. What happens if I find that it's the wrong child? That's when I shall go to the police. I'm not one to be taken advantage of, Mr. Hammer. No, I'm sure you're not. All right, all right. I'll, uh, I'll go down and look around and see what I can find. Let me check. Oh, yes, sir. The local police were very cooperative. A few simple questions got some equally simple answers. No matter what the language, it spelled con game. Marina Gabreski had given Wilma Putnam an address in Old Town Bustle. She had also written her that she was working in a show at the fair. I was interested in seeing her at work. Yes. My name is Mike Hammer. Oh? I'm a private detective. Why do you wish to see me? Anna. Anna? Or is her name Derna Pensnick? See, in your letters to Mrs. Wilma Putnam, you stated that you spent some time at Ravensbrook concentration camp in 1944. You also stated that while you were there, you met a Mrs. Truda Pensnick and her baby daughter. Are you investigating this matter for Mrs. Putnam? Mm -hmm, that's right. Why? What's wrong? Doesn't she believe me? Well, I, I don't believe you, honey. But I was in that camp. I was with Mrs. Pensnick when she died. Yeah, I know, I know. And after that, you took care of her baby daughter, called her Anna Gabreski, and brought her to Brussels here with you, and raised her as your own little baby sister. Every bit of that is true. And not quite. No, I've done some checking. Anna Gabreski actually is your baby sister. She was born here in Brussels in March 1945. She died. She did? Yes. Oh, how? A flu epidemic that same year. You see, we were on relief. 
I had registered Anna with the welfare agency. And then it was very simple to call the little Pensnick baby Anna. Yeah, it was also pretty simple to go to Ravensbrook and check the records for a sample of Tudor Pensnick's handwriting. That diary is the truth. Oh, come on, honey, come on. Don't kid yourself and don't kid me. Anybody trained in police work can spot a copy job. You haven't got one chance in a million of passing your baby sister off as Derna Pensnick. Anna is Mrs. Putnam's niece, and I can prove it. I can prove it right now if you'll wait. I think you're lying a blue streak. But okay, I'll give you a chance to prove it. Go on. trick could cost me a lot of time explaining myself. The way things were going, I couldn't afford to lose that time right now. Outside, please. about a private detective. We're being investigated. I could have figured that out for myself. What did he say? Did you admit anything? I didn't have to. He knows the whole thing's a fraud. He knows nothing of the kind. That's a bluff. What did you tell him? I told him I had proof that Anna was the Pensley girl. Then I tried to have him arrested for annoying me. He got away from the police. That wasn't very smart. Now he knows the whole deal's for me. Well, I thought if we had a little more time... You thought? Maybe we can put the bite on Mrs. Putnam after all, if we play it right. You phone her. Tell her to meet you backstage right away. Tell her that she can see Anna. From now on, we're leaving Anna out of this. A little late to start that, isn't it? When I thought there was a chance of her going to America, I was willing to do anything you said. But now I see you just want to use her to wring a few more dollars out of Mrs. Putnam. I won't let you do it. You won't? No. You, uh, you tell Mrs. Putnam to bring the money with her. Merci beaucoup, monsieur. Anna Gabreski lives here. I'm Anna Gabreski. Oh. Well, would you by any chance know a war orphan named Derna? Are you from America? Uh-huh. Do you know a Mrs. Putnam? Yeah, she's a friend of mine. My name's Mike Hammer. Come in. Sure. You probably wanted to see Marina. She works at the fair. Well, later. You said that you were Anna Gabreski. Well, who's Derna? I'm Derna. But everyone has called me Anna since the real Anna died. Oh, I see. Well, how long have you known that you were Derna? Six months ago, my sister, I mean Marina, I still think of her as my sister, heard from my aunt in America. That's when she told me about my real mother who died in a concentration camp. Mm-hmm. Tell me, honey, do you remember anything at all about your real mother? Marina says she was beautiful. I bet she was, honey, I bet she was. Tell me, who's this uh, Roland Mariel? He's engaged to marry Marina, I think. He's been awfully nice to us ever since the war. Yeah. Do you live in this, this big house here all by yourself? Marina's home nights, and Uncle Roland visits us a lot. He bought me a new dress for when I meet Mrs. Putnam tomorrow. Would you like to see it? It'll only take a moment. Oh, no, honey, that's all right. No, that's all right. Uh... Mike Cameron, I'll give you five to one that your uncle Roland. 
So you're the detective. Uh-huh. I, uh, I suppose you've talked to Anna. That's right. Where is she? She's upstairs. She wanted to show me a new dress. What did you tell her? Now, what did you expect me to tell her? That she's a fraud and a phony? And part of a scheme to bilk money from a rich woman who's trying to do the right thing by her dead sister? You said that? No. No, thanks. No, I'm not going to do that kind of a job. In that case, I, I'm glad you're here, Mr. Hammer. I've been wondering how I could get in touch with you. I have some proof on the identity of the girl we call Anna that I think you'll find quite convincing. Don't do it. This is pointing right at your head. Now, take that out of the drawer, carefully by the barrel, and put it on the desk. Now, get your hand off it. To do. I'm going to turn you over to the police. Police? On what charge? The charge will be murder. Murder? Pardon me for being so, so stupid. Just who's been murdered? The original Anna Gabreski, Marina's sister who died in this house 12 years ago. Yeah, she died of the flu. The flu. The police will check and find out there's no record of death, not even a doctor's certificate. And there wasn't a flu epidemic that year. Now, either that girl upstairs is the original Anna Gabreski and not the war orphan Derna, or you and Maria are going to have a lot of tall explaining to do to the police. Now, which is it going to be? Very clever, Mr. Hammer. Typical. You know, if you didn't have that gun, I wouldn't stand here and watch you wreck a young girl's chance at happiness. Me wreck a young girl's chance of happiness, huh? Oh! That's for the kid. You and her sister don't give a hoot about her. You put together some flimsy story that even a fool can see through, and you expect me to believe it. And then you tell me that I'm going to wreck that kid's dreams. Anna. Anna, how much did you hear, honey? <laughs> Boss of luck, Mr. Hammer. They don't teach that in America. No. <laughs>
pretending I was someone else. Yes, Anna. It's all a lie. Why did you do it? Oh, my pet, I didn't want to hurt you. I thought if you had a chance to grow up in America, you wouldn't be like me. That's all right, Marina. It's a terrible thing to do. I don't know what else I can say. I'll try to pay you back all the money you've sent. It's obvious you didn't do it just for the money, my dear. This is Mrs. Putnam, Anna. I hope you find the real Derna, ma'am. I'm afraid that's not possible now. My sister's little girl must have died with her in the concentration camp. I'm awfully sorry. Oh. I don't know much about raising 14-year-old girls. My husband and I never had any children. But my house is roomy and big. And there are lots of young ladies of your age in my neighborhood. Would you still like to come to America, Anna? Oh, yeah, Marina. Oh, now, now, that's enough of that. I don't want to see a lot of weeping. With your consent, I'll make all the necessary arrangements. Oh, yes. Anna, come along with me. We'll see the fair. That way we can get acquainted. And we'll all get together again after the show. Well, it looks like you got what you wanted after all, Marina. You going to visit very often in America? No. There's lots of things better left on this side of the ocean. Hmm. Oh, one more thing. Roland's a pretty greedy man, and Mrs. Putnam's a pretty rich woman. What happens if he tries to make trouble? I'll kill him, Mr. Hammer. Does that answer your question? It sure does, honey. Yeah, all right, all right, all right, Miss America. I just happen to remember that the State Department only hires single women. Uh -huh. I also checked and found out that none of the girls working at the embassy have husbands. Now, what do you say to that? Well, Mr. Hammer, you said you were a private detective. I thought I'd let you figure that out for yourself. <laughs> well, this case isn't closed, not by a long shot, honey. I'll be there in uh, 20 minutes. Bye. Bye. <laughs>